Clippity clap. Clip Welcome clap clappers. to this episode that we are filming directly after filming another episode. What? We would uh, never. The no, Gordon we scale. We wear the same t shirts. Battle. We did that on the purpose. Game. I'm not wearing beep, beep, pants. Beep, 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 beep. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Borden Scale Podcast, Battle of the Games. Borden Scale's first ever snake video. It's another vendor spotlight. That the penguin's the only one with any character. What you're likely to hatch when you mix certain genetics. You know I don't play right, 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 right. Anyways, this episode of Battle of the Games, we have Scythe. This is Kevin's what? number one. one. The number one game of all time ever invented since the beginning of space and time Mm -hmm. on this flat earth of ours. Scythe is Kevin's number one. Is this our first number one? Yes, it is is our first number one. Kevin, do you want to explain the game? Yeah. So uh, Scythe is a, you know, it's funny. You asked me if I want to explain it. What? How would you describe it? It's got a little bit of area control. It's got a little bit of economy. Um, Worst game action ever. programming, action selection. Um, Just Scythe is kind of a alternate history a industrial punk version of, you know, the Lang triplets, where there's area control what? mixed with, you know, fantasy realms mixed with. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you got mechs. You got the first. You got, you got workers. You got yeah. minions. You you got 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 you're moving around a map, yep. making resources and using those resources to make other things on the board while no. building out your economy. Nah, I don't like that. I don't like that. And one. then you have your own separate board where nope. you're picking actions to do nope. and your actions are what's allowing you to move and make stuff. And what else? No, we're going to do this again. <laughs> in Scythe, you are a asymmetric, unique faction in the game that is trying to Spread and pro- uh, pr- proliferate yourself all over the Spreading map. Spreading their seed. And upgrade. Ooh. What? Oh. <laughs> I mean, the villagers do reproduce. Yes. And you are using workers. You're using your faction to send out your workers and your main leader to go and produce resources and other workers so that you can upgrade, so you can build buildings and fight the other characters. That's not really a huge part of it, but you want to control... A lot of stuff on the board. You have a bunch of different things that you need to go for on the board. There are objective cards that you each have um, a chance to score. You can get points through battling. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of there's a lot of different ways. Restart it. Yep. All the way back to the beginning. Hello, welcome to this episode (laughs) of the Board and Scale Battle of the Games series. And today we have Scythe. This is Kevin's number one. And Kevin is going to explain it in a very concise and good way. No, we're just going to use the other footage. This is great. Damn. It's totally fine. <laughs> I hope you know how to play Scythe because I couldn't do it. I don't know. No, it's so I actually really appreciate You want me to try again, guys? No, I actually, <laughs> no, because I think all of the, the explanations that you all just Kenzie, vomited out there there's are. There's a board, you have character, you have cube. <laughs> All of that is all true. There's a lot of there's a lot of stuff going on in Scythe, but it all works together very synergistically. Oh, you're one of those people. What? You guys are all right while all wrong at the same time. <laughs> no, it was perfect. I think I think it was it was well done. There are a lot of ways to score points in the game, um, to to score objectives and whatnot. Um, and there's a lot of different there's a lot of different facets. Um, so I think all of that I do believe is true. Um, but yeah, you basically pick a faction, um, and then each faction has got special powers and, um, yeah. Okay. This is just absolutely chaotic. See, that's what I'm saying. (laughs) It's just got a lot going on. It's fine. There's a lot going on in the game, (laughs) but yeah, you basically, it's like alternate history. All you're doing is spreading yourself across the map to collect resources and take over (laughs) territories while completing objectives. All... End of the game, for some reason, whoever's got the most money wins. Is it eight stars or six stars? It's your six star. It's six. six. So there's, yeah, you're, you're trying to get six different things that you're going to complete. 
And you can do that by getting uh, maxing out your power, maxing out your popularity, getting all of your workers out, getting all of your buildings out, getting all of your upgrades, getting all of your mechs out, winning one or two different combats, uh, completing an objective card, and I think that might be it. If you're still watching this, <laughs> please comment in four sentences how you would have described this game. <laughs> and anyways, we're going to start with the ratings. And I'll go first. Sure. I'll go first. All right. Scythe, I really like this game. This was actually one of the first big old giant Mungus games that we got um, years ago when we first got into the hobby. And then we got the expansions, and then we got the Rise of Fenris and played through that campaign. That was really cool. Got the legendary box to put everything all into one box, and then never played it again, just like everyone else who puts stuff in the big old box version of games. That's actually really true. With all that said, regardless, I still like the game and getting to play it again after so many years the other day was really cool. It was really nice. It was weirdly nostalgic, even though like I own the game and can pull it out any other time, you know, but it was good. I like the game. I miss it. I would actually love to play it again right now, but it's really late and uh, I will give it an eight. That's my rating. You would only give it an eight? Only because we haven't played in a long time and eight's good for me. Interesting is my turn. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it's another one of those those games where Kenzie says, Oh, it's just one of those things where I don't like area control and I don't like combat. Yeah. Um, but Scythe is just one of those games where it doesn't really matter. Like it matters, but it also doesn't at the same the time combat because is not you the just point. do so much of your own thing. You don't have to do any of the combat. The combat is actually some of the easiest parts of it to come by and to get. Because if somebody attacks somebody attacks you and you just happen to beat them, you get the star. Mm -hmm. Huh. Cool. And um, you're penalized for attacking. So combat is not uh, you know, not smiled upon. Yeah, you're right. They get penalized. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Only if you scare the workers away. True. Anyway, anyway. Um, so Scythe is just not one of those games where that really matters that much. Even though it has those aspects, it doesn't really bother me in this game. I This is just one of those games that I've loved for a really long time. Um, and yeah, we haven't played it in a really long time, but I think I would still give it an 8 now. Cool. This is just one of those games that has a really special place in my heart. We can tell it. because the way you described it was so magical and enthusiastic and perfect. I would have kept going. You told me no. You have cube. <laughs> <laughs> I hey, be nice to me. Okay, you Kenzie gives eight and a half. <laughs> Scythe is so dope, so cool. Um, I've only ever played it online. Our play was the only play that I've ever played it. The physical copy of it. And it was cool because it was all prettied up and, and we also played with the big board. Painted. That's true. We played with the big monster board and Kevin did paint all of the minis a unique color. Or not unique color, but like he painted them all highly detailed. Mm -hmm. So they are very unique and very cool. So and it also throws you for a loop. You look at the cover and you see these mechs and you see fucking these people and you're like, Oh shit, this is gonna be a mech game. We're fighting. Yeah. Nope. Not at all. It's not what it is. Yeah, not. And I like that. I really like that. Me too. I would not. I don't think I would like it as much if it was combat oriented. Me if it was just mechs fighting each other. Um, I like the fact that when you make resources, you got to take that shit with you. You got to protect them. It, it ain't going in a back pocket. It ain't going in, a, in an inventory. Can, people can take them. People can take it. You leave it. Somebody's gonna come and scoop it up. Um, I really like that about this uh, about about Scythe. Um, I like I also like the scale of it. It's very pretty on the on the table. It's very big, but it's not like too much. It's not overdone. Even with the big board, I don't yeah. think it's too much either. Um, Sorry, but yeah, I really like it. I give it an eight. All right, <laughs> Aries <Give> agrees. Andreas. <laughs> He's I like, definitely thought like, that was Kevin's butt. All right. No. <laughs> uh, so, obviously, my number one game. Um, interestingly enough, I think I've telegraphed this before, but I have not played with Wind Gambits. I have also not played with or done the Rise of Fenris expansion. 
Um, I've also not played with the modular board. Um, has anyone played with the modular board? No. No. Um, so there's still room to, to actually improve the game, potentially change the game and some of the dynamics, which I'll talk about here in, in, based on our experience. Um, this was one of the earlier games that I kickstarted. I think this was maybe the last game that um, that they kickstarted. You kickstarted this? Yeah. Mm-hmm. We bought it retail. Yeah. I'm pretty so we, sure we this may have been then. the last one uh, that uh, that they that they put on crowdfunding. Because mm. I think their success for this one was good enough that they're like, hey, look, we don't have to do this anymore. And I know that's been a big part of like Jamie's thing is like, look, we don't they don't need they don't crowdfunding. Need the, yeah. Right. Um, so they leave that space to other folks. But I 99.9% sure I, I, I kickstarted this one. And um, it was the very first game I'd ever played that had dual layer player boards. Um, and I got the version with all of the upgraded components. So like metal coins, first time I played a game with metal coins, the realistic resources, like the metal, or it's literally just chunks of metal, right? Um, everything was just so pristine. The models, uh, fantastic. Um, sitting down and reading the rule book for the first time was just like butter. Um, it is a complicated game as are our multiple attempts to explain it to you. <laughs> uh, it is, there's a lot going on. There are a lot of rules and it can be really intimidating. You sit down and you read the rule book if you take the time and it is just very smooth. Um, if I remember correctly, this one has a bunch of uh, designer notes. It'll explain like, hey, like there's a re- this is why, right? And you don't have to read them, but if you do read them, it helps you illuminate or helps illuminate parts of, of the rule set and, and kind of the, the design of the game in a way um, that just pulls you into it quite a bit. Um, so from a from a production point of view, it's just absolutely flawless. Um, we did play with the expansion for uh, the Invaders from Afar, um, which introduces the two extra factions. Um, and, of course, with that, it changes a couple of the things for some of the other players. Um, but um, so, well, like, goodbye. So first, for one of the earlier crowdfunding <laughs> games, um, loved everything about it component-wise. Of course, it plays really well. We, As everyone's kind of described, there are a lot of ways you can play the game. Combat doesn't have to be a big part of it for you. Um, there's a lot of ways to victory, and um, it is the to me one of the eminent examples of a game that you can play, lose, and still have enjoyed every turn of the game. Um, and uh, even if somebody stumbles into your territory and tries to block you from getting to the factory, go. Cool. Emotional there. I'm walking. <laughs> hey. I'm walking here. Yeah. Um, I will say though that um, I do have some. I do have at least one initial, like one complaint, and it was actually illuminated quite well in the game that we played. Is that when you're not playing with a modular board? And again, I haven't played with a modular board, but I understand that, like, how it works. You have your faction is fixed on the map, so depending on your player count. That player may or may not have, or certain players may have empty spaces near them. And of course, in a game that has area control aspects. And space matters. Space matters, right? That can create uh, unbalance, right? Um, So um, I don't exactly, again, I don't know the rules for how the modular board works, if that helps address that problem, or if the modular board is really just about randomness to create new new opening scenarios. but I'm hopeful that the modular board helps address some of those spatial issues as far as like balancing um, where players start in relationship to each other. Um, I'm all about randomness in general, but I do think it would help just because some of them, like a lot of the characters are, you unlock movement on specific areas, like through mm-hmm. specific terrains and stuff. So And the river, I mean, honestly. None of, none of yeah. us could do anything about it. Yeah, so the the interestingly, the two expansion characters are not on islands to begin with. So they actually have unfettered direct access to the middle of the board, to the factory. Um, all of the other original factions have to, they're on an island and they have to cross a river in order to get to the mainland area to get to the factory. Um, and you start with, I think it's three different uh, hexes in your original, in your home area. Yeah. 
And the way that they all work is every one of them has a Riverwalk ability that will, if you unlock it by moving your uh, unlocking it with the mech, um, it will grant you access to transfer to and from your space based on the specific geography printed on the map. So like I can go into mountains or tundras or whatever. Yeah. Um, and I again, I, I I wish I'd played them had the the, the knowledge of the, how the modular rules work, but I'm, obviously it, it addresses that. So that, more randomness, more uniqueness, great. But if it does address player spatial issues, that would be, that would take out all of the flaws I have with this game. Um, so all that being said, despite being my number one, and if you watch all these videos, I'm going to forecast a future uh, uh, number here a little bit, but this one is actually a 9.5 for me. Um, and that's because, again, I haven't explored some of the stuff. I do have one, that big particular issue that can really throw games off. Um, but there actually may be a solution to it, and maybe I'll get around to playing that solution, and next year it'll just be a 10. Who knows? So, say. All right. Da, 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 da. And that will do it for our ba, ba, ba. Battle of the Games review for Scythe. And if you enjoyed this, subscribe and check out the other Battle of the Games reviews. And we'll see you at the finals. And this, you'll see this game again in the rankings video at the end of all of this. Thank you. Play more, <laughs> Mon- play more Monopoly. <laughs>